What up, friends? YouTube, youtube.com slash Robin Black. Thanks for hanging. Very, very first thing Mark and I ever did on this YouTube channel, now five months ago, maybe even a little more, was we called the fighting is about fighting one. A quick, uh, if you see my phone here, if you're listening on SoundCloud or iTunes, people keep asking about Stitcher, Mark. What's Stitcher? Do we need Stitcher? Is this something we need to do? Okay, apparently we, apparently we need, we need that. Uh, also, uh, speaking of, people give us a lot of good insight. It's been one of the cool things about, about building this channel is that we get feedback, people offer all kinds of design ideas and all kinds of you know, art and graphics, people share stuff. There's this amazing community-based nature of YouTube and of this type of channel that is just one of the great gifts that was unexpected. You, Mark, you knew about that. He's, Mark's a big podcast consumer. I was a guy who worked in television, uh, 50, 60, 70 hours a week in TV, making, doing, being enabled to do what I love to do, which is analyze fighting and create art and storytelling around the beauty of combat. Um, but I was immersed in the old technology of television and the old culture of television. I didn't realize how amazingly um, communal and ideas are shared and how much you know, people give and, and trade value with each other in the world of podcasting, in the world of, you know, this type of creating and sharing. It's been really cool. On my phone, I have uh, my friends on Periscope live. We do that sometimes. We're going to get it live on YouTube. I got a lot to, uh, to tell you about. Uh, usually fighting is about fighting. If you don't just stumble into this, I let you know that unlike 90% of the stuff on the channel which is talking about George St. Pierre's upcoming fight or Conor McGregor's upcoming fight or, you know, what happened in the Bisping match uh, or uh, analysis of fights before they happen. Although fighting is in the title twice, uh, this one is about the journey and the process and the learning and, and the, you know, the trip. It, it was the first thing that we did and uh, one of the anchors to... All of our discussions here on our YouTube channel is the idea of the growth mentality. Shortly after this, and you'll probably be able to see it tomorrow, depending on when you watch this or listen to this, um, we'll be doing an Ask Robin Black. It's going to be a part of that too. It's something that I've come back to recently, reminded myself a lot about. This is the root philosophy of what we talk about around here, and that is wherever you apply effort, you will grow. Um, we have a white belt mentality, a, a beginner's mentality, where we're always looking for new information. And uh, wherever we put effort, we will grow. There's a fixed mindset. That is the mindset where this is who we are. These are my skills. I like this kind of coffee. I can jump this high. I'm only this smart, whatever. Uh, a growth mentality says that wherever we apply effort, we will grow and we will improve. If I practice playing guitar, I'll be, get better at playing guitar. If I lift weights, I'll get stronger. If I study, I'll, I'll learn more about the subject, etc. right? If I want to become more efficient and I work on efficiency so I can accomplish more, I'll do that. If I want to be a better husband, uh, I'll learn to massage feet better or, or, or be a better listener or whatever it is, right? That's what we believe. So, and we try, what I'm hoping, you know, it's been very important to us here that uh, we give value outside of the fight that's coming up Saturday or the fight you just saw. And I hope that by sharing the journeys and the trials and the setbacks and the failures and what we learn and, and what it takes to learn it and, and stuff that people get some value out of it. And a lot of people tell me they do, which is very nice to hear. I got a bunch of stuff to tell you about that's coming up. Live show, tell you about that in a bit. I'm off to Russia for a project, we'll tell you about that in a bit. Um, but it's been a while since we did one of these and we learned a lot in that time. You know, we've learned a lot about uh, ourselves and about podcasting and about fighting and about business and about control controllables. Um, the last few days, Ally Aquinta, said, who, if he doesn't like something, he's gonna let you know. And by all means, uh, one of the reactions people can have is, shut up and stop whining, raging Al. You have whatever reaction you want. Um, you also know that 
I personally am not a complainer. Uh, oh, actually, that's not true. I am a complainer who tries to not complain. Uh, we're all complainers. It's part of our culture. It's part of what we do. But if we purposefully look at the fact that complaining is in and of itself just talking, and talking doesn't usually actually solve anything, um, we find that the effort might be better put somewhere, and we also end up raging and feel, raging out, for example, and feeling frustrated. But at the same time, as much as I'm like, don't waste your time vocalizing what bothers you if that makes you feel like it, it is doing something, because it isn't. At the same time, I also don't tell people to not express themselves. So it's a very interesting dichotomy for me personally. Um, and uh, in certain areas where nobody complains, maybe it is valuable. I mean, we see it as we examine this thing that we study all the time, fighting and the UFC and this world around it. Demetrius Johnson complained in an area where most people don't, in an area where most people are afraid to. And as a result, it worked out for everybody. You know, um, so I don't know. I don't know where I'm at with that. I know that complaining throughout your life and throughout your day and saying the world isn't fair doesn't help, but maybe drawing attention to injustice does. I'm not sure. But my friend Raging Al, who I'm an enormous fan of, both professionally with his fighting and personally, is a real hell of a dude. Um, he was criticizing, um, maybe that's it, to criticize is to be a critic of. Hmm. Because criticism can be positive too, positive criticism. You know, you are as a critic saying, actually this movie was fantastic. That is a form of criticism. I don't know, I'm not sure where I'm at with that yet. I do know that spending a lot of your day complaining about the injustices of the world might prevent you from actually doing something about the injustices of the world. But anyways, uh, I digress as I often am prone to do. Raging Al says uh, that Snoop Dogg is, um, is uh, rude to the fighters or very, you know, un whatever. What do you think was the word he used? Disrespectful. disrespectful. I'd say that, I haven't listened, I haven't listened, but I would say it's probably true. Um, <laughs> wouldn't you, have you listened? I've seen like the highlights of the week yeah. that they put out. Yeah. Just, yeah. And uh, so, and since then, a lot of people, I get for sure a hundred a week. I can't tell you, honestly, as much as they don't give a shit, you know. Uh, I, sorry, the best yeah. way to describe it is, you know, if you're like at a bar drinking, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, that one guy. Yeah, like, talking mad shit. That. Yeah, that's Snoop. Yeah, hey man, that could be entertaining for some people. But uh, uh, every week, a hundred to sometimes three hundred. Sometimes just during the fights, it'll be a hundred. If you include all the re things, uh, people will say Robin Black should be doing this commentary, and so they talk about Snoop and ah, oh, you know, it should be Robin Black. And I'll tell you, I don't think they give a shit, uh, but I do. It's a compliment every time I hear that. Every single time I hear that. But uh, I don't think you can compare. I think, to be honest, I haven't heard it. So my, my opinion of is only an opinion of an idea. But the idea that outside of, you know, respect, nobody's got more respect for fighting than me. Nobody's got more respect for the art of, the beautiful art of combat than me and the fighters themselves. Um... But, and of course, that's the way I look at it. But outside, you go out there, of course, those of you like Raging Al and those of you who have responded and, and said it should be Robin Black, it's not the same thing, by the way, but, but uh, and other things like that, it's very kind. Um, of course, we're going to be offended by it. <laughs> you know, of course we are. We have this reverence for fighters and fighting. But if some people who've never heard of fighting at all, in fact, they don't even like it, but they like comedy or they like, you know, controversy or they just like Snoop, those guys will like it. Also, if you hate it and they like it and then people will argue about it on the Internet, I can get you elected president of the United States if it goes far enough. So it's a modern, hey, it is a modern thing, you know, uh, so I'll just go with it, you know. Although I'm not going to be the guy to tell Raging Al to stop being vocal because it's fun, actually. <laughs> He's a crazy lunatic. And uh, you know what? 
we're getting to a point now on Ask Robin Black, it's not going to be on there today, but we're getting to a point now where you see these controversies. Somebody said, you know, how much of this fighting with the uh, fighters is menu and Dana is manufactured. And the truth is, I don't know that it's ever manufactured, but I think it's also at some point somewhere between, you know, reality is a weird thing, man. Reality is a weird, weird, weird thing. We're all discovering that. This is a part of 2017, and it's going to be part of the next couple of years. You know, it's real. I'm mad at Tyron Woodley. But if in being kind of mad at Tyron Woodley, I understand, and Tyron Woodley's mad at me, and he's going to leak a thing and whatever, and we're both really mad, if we both understand that rather than normally, if, if you and I get angry at each other, or I get angry with my teacher or a cop, I start being angry with a cop and telling him off or, you know, somebody in authority or a close friend, we damage the relationship. But if actually what happened every single time we had conflict like that, we got richer or we got rewarded in some way, we we would let it go a lot different. Don't you think? You know what I mean? If by telling people that they're bleeding from their eyes and whatever, and we're telling somebody else you just grab her by the pussy, and we're telling somebody else Mexicans are rapists and whatever, if in doing that, or we're saying we're going to leak the secrets uh, be- behind the, the UFC's thing, or we're saying screw Dana White, he doesn't understand, I'm the greatest of all time, like, like Demetrius did, or Dana saying, you know, fuck him if he doesn't, whatever. If any, and I use anything from politics to fighting, to this is the world we're living in if doing that thing rewarded you in some way why wouldn't you do more of it you'd also wait a second when i get in a fight it's rare these days which is nice but if i get in a, in a disagreement or a sort of a you know a bit of a struggle with my wife or a close friend or something uh after i feel terrible oh man that was awful what why, why was i like that or why were they like that or whatever and then you hope to be better But if instead somebody gave me a shitload of money or gave me that thing I was after, I'm like a little kid. I'd be taught to do it more. So the conflict I don't think is manufactured at all. But I also don't think it's discouraged because it it rewards itself. You know, strange. We're living in in strange times. There's no doubt about it. Is conflict theory, yeah. Conflict theory is something we'll dig into, maybe for McGregor or Mayweather 4. If you haven't, that's something I want to say. If you haven't checked out, if you have, if you're watching eight minutes into the, the conversation about our observations about trying to build a YouTube channel and trying to grow as people, Mark and I and our, our crew and the people around us, you've watched my Mayweather-McGregor analysis. But if you haven't, I've done three and they, each one gets deeper on the layer of the next and I've found I'm feeling great I went to a cottage last week but I found just before that I started feeling this deep frustration and it's and emotion and when I self-analyze and self-analysis is real important we got to do it we got to look who who are we why are we doing this what why why am I thinking this way you know how, how could slightly altering my behavior, make me and the people around me happy. That's just, that's just trying to be a half decent human. That's what that is. We got to do that. But uh, when I look back at it, there's natural frustrations uh, when I really believe that we should be pushing things that we love deeper, not shallower. But I also am starting to understand that my, that's my role. That's where I'm comfortable. That's where I'm happy. You know, you tr- and this is not new. I'm not some weird thing. I'm not something new at all. I'm just a type. Um, you take that one jazz player, that guy who just fucking gets high and noodles all over the place and explores shit, and you ask him to play a pop song, he's not going to be happy. And every now and again, it's going to bug, bug him that he is pushing all these exploratory boundaries that he thinks are so important. They're only important to him and the people who like his stuff. Me doing this is only important to me and the people who like this stuff. And then that's not as many. Um, But that guy's mad sometimes that the shitty pop uh, artists are just doing the same thing as everybody else and they're getting rewarded and he's not. He starts feeling hard done by. And that's that's on you. That's your own ego. That's my own ego. So uh, uh, what instead of trying to navigate that way that this is what it is and I should be rewarded and I should get that thing and yet... To do that, you have to give up that exploratory nature. There's conflict, self-conflict. 
in there. So I am now going back to, to uh, prioritizing further exploration into what we do. Further exploration into, um, into the deeper aspects of fighting, the philosophy of fighting, the mentality of fighting, the physiology of fighting, what we can learn from fighting. That's where we're going. Um, and uh, so I got a few other things to tell you about, things we've learned and things we're doing. But in doing that, in saying, wait a second, rather than trying to figure out how to get something that requires you to, 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 to dumb down some of your thinking or to prevent yourself from going too far, let's do the opposite. Let's go and really explore out in, into the world with this stuff. So what we did is we went ahead and we booked the first ever Ask Robin Black Live, okay? The first ever Ask Robin Black Live. Uh, super pumped. So a number of, uh, of things started that. It was something we wanted to do. I have, you know, 12 or 15 years of doing live performances. I used to play in a rock band, and I loved it. Traveling, putting on the thing, there's something special about it. Mark's going to love it when we're, when we're doing it. Um, and I missed that. And, uh, but it's like, how do we do this live? How do we do this live? And then my friend Brendan Shabbos and Fighter and the Kid first, and then Brendan, they've been doing their thing live. So it's like, and I suddenly started to realize there's lots of people who do podcasts live. This is just some kind of podcast. But uh, you also realize there's, you have to do things your own way. So I'm not going to do comedy, although I'm hoping people will laugh if I say something funny, and it's supposed to be funny. Um, but I'm not going to do comedy, but I've, got to, I've started to figure out where this is going, and it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be a lot of fun. Ask Robin Black. If you haven't watched it, there's one, you know, there's 13 on the YouTube page before this one, and there's one after. If there isn't, it'll be there, and same with SoundCloud and iTunes. If there isn't, it'll be there um, within a day, 36 hours at the most when you see this. Um, Ask Robin Black is I take direction from friends and audience and, and like-minded people because I have a deep curiosity in finding another layer and another layer and a further answer. And if we know something, what does it really mean? Somebody says that was great timing. Well, what is great timing? What does that mean? It's because we know the word and we know how to put the word when we see it. Does that mean we understand it? And the further that I've started to understand things where you understand them in your fucking skin. You know what I mean? Uh, if, you, if you did listen to those three McGregor Mayweather, I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm just bringing you along on my thinking. You don't have to agree or you can go, dude, you're fucking crazy. That's all fine. But when we talk about disruption, why it is and how you look, and, and we say there's no such thing as boxing, which I know sounds weird. What it really is, oh, wait, it's happening neurologically. Wait, how do we train that? Wait, what does that actually mean? What does that feel like? When you explore like that, every now and again, people, and, and this will be one of the rare times today that I'm going to insult anybody or, or sound like a dick, but dumb people, sorry. Like people who just, they're not very far along their thinking range will say, dude, you say, you talk a lot, but you don't say anything. Fuck, man, you're not listening. And I'm not saying that because I'm smart or my shit's important. I'm saying to explore the same idea again and slightly different and from a slightly different angle and from 30,000 feet and from three inches away and how it tastes and what it feels like is saying something. In fact, to me, that's how I learn everything. You don't have to. You don't have to. And if you are sitting here going, dude, you're still saying nothing. I'm sorry I called you dumb. And your perspective is still your own, and you, you get to have it. But if you really want to understand something, you don't see it, be able to recognize it and be able to attach the word to what it is, you feel it. You experience it. You know what it is. You can do it. You could, you know, when it's done differently or you see it backwards or you see it inside out or you see it in black and white or it's slow motion or fast motion, then you can still feel it. That's what it is to understand something, you know? Conor McGregor uh, will be different. He'll have a different, you know, different rhythm. Uh, he'll be unpredictable. He'll be able to beat Floyd. Okay? You say that to me and I say, no, he won't. And we argue with each other. 
I've seen these arguments. We've all had these arguments. We've all been one half of the arguments, including me. And there are those of us who say part of the fun of sports or entertainment is that these are impossible conversations to go any further. And if that's how you feel and that's what you like, that's you're absolutely a valid prerogative. But that's not true. He's too fast, and, but no, he'll be deceptive. What is that? What does it mean to be actually fast? What's the brain doing? Oh, he's got too good of reflexes. What's a fucking reflex? How does a reflex arc work from stimulus to the, to the um, spinal cord and out to the output? How does it work? What does it mean? What's it actually? Those are, that's how you explore things. That's how I explore things. You know, and then if I understand that, it's like, oh, and it goes to the nervous system, it goes to the, to the um, spinal cord, and then it comes out the hand. Cool. We feel good about that. We, we've learned something. Then we can go, wait, what, how does the spinal cord work? Oh. What, is it electrical input? Is it like electricity? You can just keep asking. And we did this. This has been punched and kicked and yelled and taught and, and um, red X'd out of us. Not punched and kicked for most of us, hopefully. Uh, when we were kids, we'd say, Dad was, we're going to get on the bus. You know, Why? Because we've got to go see Grandma. Why? Because it's Grandma's birthday. Why? Because she was born this day 63 years ago. Why? Because then you can either go, well, because God made her and we can be done. Or you can say, well, because her mother was pregnant nine, year, nine months older than that. Why? Grandpa nailed her. Why? Because he wanted to. Why? Because of this sex drive. You know, like you can go forever. Why? 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 How? How? Why? You can do that forever. We did that when we were children. That's all we're doing here. That's the entirety of this YouTube channel. That's all this is. We don't even... Why? Oh, shit. I did it to myself. Why? Because of curiosity. Why? I don't know but I'd like to find out. Are we all curious? Were we born curious? Does, is curiosity a muscle? Is it a genetic trait? Is it something that the more we taste, the more we want? I don't know. That, now we have a new question. And that's all, that's all this YouTube channel is. It's the refusal to just say that when we say, you know, he slipped his head off the line and he countered with the right hand, that is what happened. At least it looks like it's what happened. If we say how, well, he moved his, his weight onto his right, ho uh, right hip, which slid out of the way. How? Why? Well, because that guy was throwing a right hand. It's dangerous if he gets hit. It'll, it could harm him and he could lose the fight. How did he move? How did he see it coming? Well, uh, his eye was able to picture that thing coming in. It went to his brain and identified it as a threat. And he was able to move. How? Well, he trained, he trained this reaction for, you know, the last seven years. With whom? Well, his coach. How did his coach learn? This is what it is. This is what it is. You don't all have to do it. You know, although if you're still sitting here with me, some of you are as weirdly curious as I am. But that's what we're doing here. And that's what we're going to do forever. And, uh, and um, once you... It, embrace that idea, like my, I'm talking about myself, it's a lot more comfortable than, you know, where do I stop, or I don't know if people are ready. If they're not ready, we'll move back. We'll go back a little bit. Somebody, you start talking about the, the central, Floyd central nervous system and, and running algorithms and, and sorting algorithms of the, what he sees, people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? We go back. Well, you know how disruptions work? Yeah, Airbnb. You know, Napster, those things worked. Well, Connor's trying to do that. What? Connor's, this is boxing, bro. Well, what is boxing, really? You just keep asking those things. It's not complicated. We just do it. But by the end of it, some people will have enjoyed themselves, and they'll be sharing this information. Some, and some other people won't give a shit. And if nobody ever watched it at all, I, I feel it now. I can feel that now. I know now. And people will often who enjoy fighting will say, how do you become an analyst? This is how. Start wherever you are and just start doing this forever. The problem is people go, okay, well, wait. I got to know 
these 27 terms, which I don't quite understand, but if I can see that that guy needs to take the center of the cage and work his jab, and then that guy needs to kick from the outside, I mean, you really want to understand something? You just keep going, keep digging. That's not, that's not the truth. This, what I'm saying right now, this isn't the truth either. The truth's going to be through this somewhere further. And that's the pleasure of all this. That's the pleasure of, of being able to analyze anything. I'll tell you, there's people who go and they drink wine and they love it and they say, I want to be a sommelier. And then they find out what the list of the comparative things, oh, where the grape is from, what's its, how many notes of whatever, is it sweet or sour, and what's the scale like? And they just study all the things, but they never really, really feel that wine. It's an ambulance. No, I f oh yeah, it was an ambulance. Yeah. Hope someone's all right. Um, you got to feel it. You got to feel it. You got to know what's in you. Is that thing that's how you analyze something that's how you really analyze something now and then to express it you find the place along the way that your audience can understand it and find a creative way to express that to them so that they can understand it enrich their understanding light a little curiosity in them and then bring them along for the ride that's what we do i'm fucking proud to do this I love doing it it's a, it's a, to me, it's a noble life's purpose. Something as beautiful as fighting. Uh, so that's what we're going to, to bring to Winnipeg uh, December 17th. The Park Theater in Winnipeg. Doors are at 7. Uh, I'm going to start at 8. And we're going to explore ideas. We're going to do some breakdowns of combat and fighting and life. And then we're going to take questions. And it's going to be awesome. And I'm pumped to do it. Uh, seeing Brendan do his thing. And uh, seeing, going and exploring people who podcast in other ways. Some of them just sit down and do their podcast. Other ones tell stories of their best podcast things. There's lots of different ways to do it. So I'm, gonna, I'm developing my way to do it myself. Um, and Mark's coming with me. Uh, Aaron, uh, I um, just got a text from him. He's going to come, and we're going to figure out how we can build different things around him. Because December 16th is the UFC in Winnipeg. Winnipeg's my old hometown. So that week, we're going to do some hotel hangouts. We're going to do some shuttle wrap-ups. We're going to build Aaron made storytell around the entire thing. And uh, because he's a talented filmmaker and storyteller. And then we'll do the live show. That's going to be amazing. So uh, tickets will be on sale in the next few weeks. The Park Theater, December 17th in Winnipeg. It's going to be something cool. I'm mega pumped. A couple other cool things coming up. If you are my friends in Russia, if you are, right down here, somebody has translated into Russian. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to be in Kazan, Russia from September 27th to around October 3rd, I believe. It is the World Wushu Championships. Wushu is sort of an umbrella term uh, about demonstration and competitive Kung Fu, Chinese martial arts. I will be commentating Sambo or Sansha, uh, S uh, Sanda, I'm sorry. Sambo is a Russian martial art. I'm in Russia, but it's a Chinese martial art, Sanda, and also known as San Shao. Some differences between the two, Kung Li trains San Shao. Um, but essentially, it is a complex martial art built with these beautiful Chinese martial arts. And in the competitive full contact form, punches, kicks, throws, takedowns, some wrestling, it's going to be amazing. So I'm going to train Sanda here in Toronto again. I've trained it before, and I'm going to do the deep dive into that. It's going to change the way I explore and understand martial arts so that's exciting and september 8th on fight pass make sure you get fight pass if you don't have it tko in montreal and september 9th i'm going to be in medicine hat alberta and uh we are commentating ramdeen and i are commentating fight nights in medicine hat alberta that is the same night as the ufc 215 is in calgary but fuck to ufc 215 come to medicine hat and uh i will buy you a beer um but that's, that's been the journey. It has been the last five, going on six months pretty soon, has been an incredible time of growth, fear, uh, excitement. Um, but it's amazing. I like 
Mark is making, you know, graphics for things. You didn't have, know how to do any of that shit before. You know, now like he's broadcasting on on uh, and cutting and editing. We're doing uh, something else. We're doing something for ACB, some analysis, you know, uh, of the main event from uh, uh, mid-August. Brett Cooper as the champ is going to be. We would do a little analysis there. And that involves cutting and building and all this kind of stuff. Mark didn't know how to do that before. I didn't know how to fucking do Periscope, that's for sure. I didn't even really know how to do my Instagram channel. You know, this is about learning, man. It's about learning. That's what we're doing. And that's why if you do watch or listen to the Fighting is About Fighting series, that's what we're hoping you get out of it. We're, there's nothing special about Mark or I. We have a pretty good work ethic, right? We're pretty driven. But you know what makes you driven? Is doing stuff you love, right? How driven are you to repair cars? Not so much, right? How driven were you to work in the bank? Not at all. You know, if you're not feeling excited or driven or motivated, explore the things that will excite you. Um, because once you're there, that's all you want to do. We made like 130 or 125 things on YouTube and, and iTunes and SoundCloud in five months. That is 20 weeks. That's five or six a week. We're almost a million views, you know? And we sat there day one, and we were like, hey, man, I had a job, and they, they closed down my department, and I don't know what we're going to do. We don't know how to do it. Now look at us. And you know where we are? I don't think we're blue belts yet. I'll ask Joe or Brendan if we're blue belts yet, because I think they're black belts now. Joe's a black belt. Joe's the black belt. Brendan's probably a brown belt now. Um, but we're growing. That, the live show in, in Winnipeg is going to be amazing. But I thank you for uh, hanging with us. And uh, my man Fife here, who is in Winnipeg, uh, we're going to see him there. Uh, he said, uh, documenting evolution is cool. And uh, documenting evolution, I hope, is of value. Because if you really believe me on this one, and, and uh, you, whatever, like, you can do it too. Whatever it is. Wherever you are, you just start. Start on the thing. Start doing it. The process of doing it will be its own reward. That's it. You know, I really want to encourage people to do that. And I do, I do get people saying, hey, I started this or, you know, I, um, your, your guys hustle gets me motivated. I've had a couple of people um, uh, start martial arts because I encourage them to. And maybe this will be one of the last things we'll think about today. Go fucking start the martial arts. Do it. If you're not, if you, for whatever reason, you're like, well, I want to get in shape first. That's a common one. No, that's how you get in shape. Everybody who puts a white belt on in a jujitsu class is out of shape. Every one of them. And if there's that one guy who wrestled in high school or whatever, just stay the fuck away from him. Or don't, because you'll learn a lot if you get tapped out. It doesn't hurt to get tapped out. Your hips will be sore and your lower back will be a little sore because you're just going to work yourself really hard. But it'd be sore if you jogged on a treadmill. You're just getting in shape, but it's also fun and you're learning stuff. Um, I do want to thank uh, my buddy Erwin LaCour. Please send him some love. Move Nat, M-O-V-N-A-T on Instagram and movenat.com. He is combining human movement with mindfulness and understanding of your own brain, awareness, senses, all of those things. And uh, it's cool. I've been watching his stuff. Go check it out on Instagram. Tell him I said hi. Tell him I sent you. Um, very cool. You know, parts of being curious is finding new things to be curious about. And uh, I'm going to leave you this, please, just like you listened all the way through here. So what I have to say is of some interest to you. When you go to click on all the normal things that you click on today, don't Google search something interesting, something that you're interested in. And then when you f find something interesting about it, take, a, find a question, a question that it raises and Google search that question next. Just do it. Just go fucking learn something different. Go yeah, go down a rabbit hole, you know? Oh, one more thing that reminds me. We're going to make some T-shirts. We're going to make them for, to sell at the, um, at the show in Winnipeg, but we're going to definitely have them ready within two or three weeks. Okay? Uh, please hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. Both are at Robin Black MMA. 
And please follow me on both if you don't. At Robin Black MMA and tell me, we're just gonna make a couple of catchphrases. It's just gonna be one of, one of the phrases and Robin Black. We gotta do enjoy, enjoy the hostilities or enjoy the hostilities, my friends, depending on how it fits. What other one should we make? Flim Flam or Hot Lava, Hot Lava or some other one? Polynesian navigators, like what? Just give me a couple of the things that just to make and, and get out there. Uh, that's all we're gonna put on the front, on the back, we'll put the YouTube channel and make it nice and simple. But if you have any other ideas, or if you're somebody who does that type of design and you wanna do it, I don't think we can pay you, but we can promote you as best we can. So if you got something, if that's your shit, uh, let us know. And uh, we'll be back with this. We missed a couple of weeks because there was a lot of really neat stuff in McGregor, Mayweather. I'm doing an all GSP Ask Robin Black right after this, which will be up within 36 hours, depending. If you're watching this in 2018 or 2050 or something, uh, it's up right now. But uh, thanks for hanging, really. And uh, please mark on your calendars December 17th in Winnipeg at the Park Theater. Tickets will go on sale in a couple of weeks. And any advice, anything you'd like to see in that live show, please, uh, please send it my way, Twitter, Instagram. And those of you who support us on Patreon, it's patreon.com slash Robin Black, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Uh, we'll never forget that you guys give us five or 10 or 15. Some people have given us 100 bucks a month. That's crazy. Never forget that. I'll never forget it. It's going to help us. We're going to set, set it aside and try to use it in Winnipeg. Or if we can, somewhere before, might be going to China, actually, in November. Maybe if we get enough support there, I can bring Mark and we can shoot some incredible shit from China. But, uh, yeah, a lot coming up. Thanks so much for all the support. And every time you share our stuff, it means the world to me. Um, we will talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Blackout. <laughs>